Hey guys, my name is Tensor. Welcome to another Flutter tutorial video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about scoped model. So I decided to do this tutorial because there was a little bit of confusion with regards to the Redux tutorial. Because the Flutter Redux plugin was built based on the scoped model pattern, it makes sense that going over the scoped model plugin will help shed some light on how the Redux library works. Now, scoped model is a set of utilities that was pulled directly out of the Fuchsia core repository. Fuchsia being the upcoming operating system that Google is building. And Fuchsia actually has Flutter widgets built directly into it. The guy who wrote the Flutter Redux plugin found that the Google engineers were using this pattern over and over and over again. And so he took the pattern out of the Fuchsia core repository and made it into a plugin. So in this tutorial, we'll be going over that pattern and we'll be talking about why it can be so powerful in any kind of Flutter application. In this tutorial, we'll be building out two different applications. One of them will be a basic counter application, and then the other one will be a more modular counter application. In our basic counter application, we just want to have one single instance of our state, and we'll be able to increment and decrement this state based on different functions that we've defined inside of our model. In our modular example, we'll be able to have multiple different counters, which will all hold their own independent state. To get started, we want to get the scoped model plugin, which currently is version 0.2.0. So we just put this in our pubspec YAML. And now we can come back into our main.dart file and bring in scoped model backslash scoped model.dart. Scoped model is based on inherited widgets in the same way that Redux is also based on inherited widgets. We can define our application model by extending the model class which comes from scoped model. This model class is also based off of an inherited widget and you'll see how that works when we start to implement it. Inside of our app model, we can create a private variable which will hold our internal state. We'll set it equal to zero by default. And then we can create a getter function which will allow us to access this private variable from outside of our model. So int get count, and then we set this equal to our count variable. Now we can create two functions which define the behavior that we want for this application. We can create a function called increment, which will increment our count by one. And then we can create a function called decrement, which will decrement our count by one. Now, because we're using scoped model and because we want to make it so that the actual widgets update when the model changes, we need to add this notify listeners call to the end of our two functions. What this will do is it will notify the state tree that our model has changed and therefore the widgets that are connected to the model need to change as well. Okay, so that's all we really need to do for our model. Let's come down into our my app class and start to build out the user interface. So I've already got a bit of boilerplate in here. We're returning a material app with a title of counter example and a theme of theme data dark. Inside of this material app, we want to create a scoped model widget and we'll be putting our app model inside of this widget, so we need to annotate that. And for the property of model for this particular widget, we can create a new instance of our app model. For this scoped model widget, we need to define a child, and I'm just going to throw in a home widget, which is a custom widget that extends a stateless widget. And our home widget will have a build function which returns a scaffold, and we'll put the rest of our user interface inside of this scaffold. So like with the store widget from our Redux example, the scoped model widget makes it so that any widgets that are inside of it have access to our app model. And of course, we need to use specific widgets to gain access to our app model. And I'll show you that here in a moment. Inside of our scaffold, I'll just make an app bar. I'll give it a title of basic counter, and then the body will be a column inside of which we'll have a piece of text which says counter colon, and then we'll have what's called a scoped model descendant, which has our app model inside of it. So the scoped model descendant is sort of like the store connector that we were using in Redux. It allows us to gain access to our app model 
it tells the enclosing widget that it needs to find the closest version of the app model. So what it does is it climbs up our widget tree and then it looks for this scoped model widget and it gets our app model from the scoped model widget. Unlike the Redux connectors, we do not need to have a converter. Instead, we just have a builder function which has access to our build context to a child widget if we're going to pass a child to this widget, which we're not in this case, and then to our app model. So then what we can do is we can output a text widget and we can directly call on model.count and then we can convert that into a string. And then of course, because we want to style this text, we can add in the style property and put in theme of context, text theme display one. And this will make it rather large. Now, if we go back into our scaffold widget, we can now fill out a property called floating action button. And for this, we'll put in another scoped model descendant. And this one will also look for the nearest scoped model with the app model inside of it. We'll create our builder function and we'll have this builder function output a button bar. Inside of this button bar, we can have two icon buttons. One of them will have icons add, and this will be our incrementation button. And then we'll have one that has icons minimize. And I'm using this icon because there's no subtract icon. And this will be our decrementation button. To add the functionality to these buttons, we can just set the on pressed property to one of the functions that we created in our model. So for our incrementation button, we just call model.increment. And then for our decrementation button, we just call model.decrement. So here is our application now. You can see we have our counter in the middle. It says zero. And when we hit one of these buttons, it will either increment or decrement. And we can increment it and decrement it as much as we want. The current structure of our application widget tree is just like this. We have our main root widget, which has the scoped model in it. And then we have the home widget, which has our scoped model descendant. And by using this, we can easily pass state from one to the other. In fact, our widget tree looks a little bit like this. We have our model up in the top here, and then we have two branches coming down like this connecting to our buttons here, and then the other one connecting to the view, which actually shows the counter. All right, so now let's refactor this a bit and make our tree a little bit more complicated. We'll just remove everything except for the center inside of our scaffold, and then we'll create a new stateless widget called counter. Inside of our counter, I'm just going to define a string called counter name, and then I'm going to give that to our counter constructor. I'm just doing this so that we can differentiate between the different counters that we create. This time for our counter, we'll make it so that we actually build out a column. So we'll return a scoped model descendant that looks for the app model, and then the builder will return a column. We'll center the children for this column by calling main axis alignment center, and then we'll put in our text fields again. And we'll make it so that the first text widget will have our counter name, and then the second one will have our model.count to string again, and we'll set up this style so it's large again. After our two text fields, we'll create our button bar again. And for this button bar, we want to wire it up like we did before. So the incrementation button will just point towards model.increment, and the decrementation button will point towards model.decrement. Now we can come back up to our home widget and build this out a bit. Inside of our center, we'll put a row, and then in this row, we'll put in two scoped model widgets. And both of these will contain our app model. We can create two final app model instances. So the first one will just be called app model one, and the second one will be called app model two. And then for these scoped models, we can just point the model property towards the appropriate model. So for the first one, we'll put in app model one, and for the second one, we'll put in app model two. And then inside of each of these scope models, we can put in a counter widget. And of course, we want to specify the counter name for each of them. So the first one will be app model one, and the second one will be app model two. Here's our new application. Let's make it a little bit more neat. And we'll do this by simply just adding main axis alignment, main axis alignment space evenly to our row. 
So now these are evenly spaced apart. And you can see we have two counters now, one called app model one and the other one called app model two. And if I increment the first one, it doesn't affect the second one. And if I decrement the second one, it doesn't decrement the first one. So these two widgets hold state that are independent of one another. Our new widget tree looks a little something like this. We have our my app widget, then we have our home widget, and then we have it branching out into two different counters. So this would be app model one, and this one would be app model two. So now our scoped model descendant for our app model one tries to find the nearest app model. It goes and it looks and it finds the scoped model that is surrounding it. So it finds app model one. And the same goes for app model two. Anyway guys, I hope you can see how this would be useful in larger applications which have much more complicated state especially since you can create multiple different models for different parts of your application, and you can make it so that the different models can be spread around in different places. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you dislike this video, then by all means, downvote it as much as you like. Have a great day.